Hey guys, I forgot to film an intro to this video, but welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not. Field that we are about to look at, a couple things about it. This was our strip till plot, so 240 feet, uh, basically a sprayer passed down and back. It was completely no-till. The rest of it was strip tilled, eight inches down with 20 gallons of 28% nitrogen. The rest of it, the no-tilled ground, it was side dressed with nitrogen. They each have the same amount of nitrogen now, and they each have the same amount of dry fertilizer. It was just different times of the year. So enjoy. <laughs> Here's our non-strip till ground down here in the bottoms. This is a 100 acre field. Uh, we left 240 feet with no strip till. That's basically a down and a back with the sprayer. That way we could side dress it. And then over here we've strip tilled. So you can, you can see the difference, see the height difference. Some of that is from fertilizer. This just got its nitrogen this week. So this corn had only had its variable rate, um, its variable rate, um, dry fertilizer on it so that's part of the reason why it's lower to the ground and green but also there's no strips so this is 100% no-till right, like I said we're gonna walk some fields today um, precision agri services they came down this is Tanner Matthews this is you yes, guys sir. this is their agronomist so research agronomist a little bit I do a lot of the uh, tech side with Evan and a lot of the guys uh, technical title being a precision ag technology specialist Okay. with them uh, but i do a lot of i do a lot of the agronomy stuff as well i do a lot of the machinery agronomists as what i like to call it okay. so uh yeah we're looking looking really at that no-till versus that strip till kind of that difference today and seeing how the the no-till really you know it really there's a big difference in it you know even looking out here something a lot of guys don't see when you drive down the road you don't see that difference and a lot of it's due to that that warming that we talk about um that ability for that plant to really really get into that soil being almost kind of like a conventional without the conventional you know a one pass tillage tool um, and having that ability to really warm and really get that initial growth very easily um, without much impediment now how much of this difference we're seeing here do you think is just nitrogen though because i mean this corn just got its nitrogen whereas the strip still had 20 gallons it's probably got a hold of in the last three weeks i'd say i mean and there it probably is there is some of that here and i think a lot of that's the color you know maybe not as much the size of it but more of the color of it okay too. okay um you know real and, question the real tell being the root systems are right yeah oh absolutely um and well we can do some digging and different things like that we can really look at that um yeah that's what i want to see the difference in the root structure yeah, absolutely we can get take take a look at that today as well just being able to initially see that there's really no not that there's really an impediment because there's you'll, you'll have a good structure in the the no-till but it's just you know it's definitely more you know you pour a, you pour a gallon of water on the soil mm -hmm. and you watch how fast that goes away in here you know on the oh, row yeah. versus yeah. over there and it goes away a lot faster it's yeah. just there's just so much more pore space and different things like that now if you do it wrong you know you can really screw some stuff up yeah you really yeah. can but Plant, plant yeah. like water was in this low spot and uh like uh, like tanner was just pointing out i mean we did lose not much i mean not much at all but you look out through there and it looks like it filtrated the water a little bit better than maybe this no-till ground maybe pitch it closed. didn't pitch it shut good enough which rubber closing wheels are very notorious for doing that a lot of the research i'm doing right now is closing wheels uh -huh. A lot of closing wheel stuff. Yeah, I'm coming from a case planter, and I, I liked its closing system better than just the rubber. Yeah, and that's similar to that's similar to furrow pours. What? Yeah, we, like Tanner said, we've got a field day coming up what, here in August. Yeah. Oh, we don't want to turn too much. It's pretty wet, but uh, so that root system's going out too, and not just straight. So down. it's yeah, it's not, it's going out pretty good, and that what the what corn roots typically grow it as a 35 degree angle is what they uh, typically do but it is still getting a pretty good amount of penetration down still so what they kind of call that is kind of tomahawk root it's kind of that straight line not as much out mm -hmm. but it's still doing a pretty good job of getting down at that angle you know if you have a bad tillage situation you'll have them real flatten out mm -hmm. and then you'll have a couple that kind of come down a little bit but overall it's not too bad looking so now we're going to dig up the root system on a strip tilled plant and compare. Good job of getting it down. No air just because of that. So it's got a deeper row system. Okay. 
It definitely like seems one. like it even just trying yeah. to pull that with a shovel. Looks like you have a little bit of trouble there. Yeah. <laughs> so how's our root structure looking on this one then? Looks a lot fuller. It is. It's a lot fuller on this one. Yeah. Yeah. It looks easier. deeper too. Yeah. That's a lot easier to really branch out because of that initial breaking. I'm going to break roots off. Here's the worst part. So there's our no-till root system. And there's our strip till root system. And look at that. That one right there going all the way down. I mean, so that's got a, that's got eight, ten inches of root system already. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the the measure. Well, I can't really see it too bad, but it's got a measuring stick on it. Right there, our longest root on there is what we got. Was about five inches or so right there. And here we're at. You know, eight, nine. That one's all the way to the handle. I mean, so we're about a foot deep on that one. Then, so he's got a whole wet nice right now. So digging into our furrow, you're saying our soil structure really isn't super compromised. I mean, there's a lot of that granular type structures still available, and that might just be soil type as well. But when you look between the two, there really isn't a whole lot of difference. Does that feel any less mellow or this is def this has definitely got a little bit harder. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, so no deep tillage has been done on this field in probably I wanna say 20, 25 years. Probably since the last farmer owned it actually. So here's really? our this is our no till and you can see that we're basically just going down the furrow with our tap root and then we've still got pretty decent brace roots, wouldn't you say? Yeah, not bad. But uh over here, I mean this is just going to help this plant be able to get a hold of more nutrients, get a hold of more water. I mean, it should just make a, an all-around healthier plant, shouldn't and it? And have a, a great a great deal better standability when it comes fall. You know, if we get some rains in the fall and it gets wet, this plant should theoretically stand better at that time than it would with this well, you know? Risking life and limb to check the crops. Look, we should be in that rock soil. Some different things to go on there, but a lot, a lot of it's downpour. It really is. So this field that we're in right now, Dad planted with his planter, and we're kind of just walking out because we want to see the differences between the two planters. Uh, we're seeing a lot more, let me find uh, where that one went. Seeing a lot more corn plants like this one where it's a couple leaf collars behind. This plant will not produce an ear. Uh, it's just competing for resources with these other plants now. A lot more uneven. Um, I, don't know, I think Dad's really starting to be a believer of the hydraulic downforce. And then we did it with so here we're, he's using thing. what's called a pogo stick, I guess. Yes, sir. And basically, you're dropping that every time you see a corn plant and recording the data. So basically, every time I see a corn plant, I set I set it down and I judge that plant whether it's a, whether it's good, as in it's consistent with the rest. A late emerger one, which okay. is about half the size of those good plants. Late emerger two, which is half the size of those, so about a quarter of the size of the good plants. And then or if if I'm doing kind of a, a regular, you know, if I see a, a complete skip, I can do a no germ if I think that there should have been a plant there. Okay, and then you're putting all that into a, pl a plot or like a scatter plot or something? So that, yep, that all gets in and saves to the cloud. Okay. So basically I won't have to, you know, I can go on and download this from the Precision Planning Cloud. Okay. And then I can go through it then. So okay. It's pretty... It's pretty cool. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. The real question is, is it waterproof? Well, we're going to test that out, it seems like. <laughs> All right, now, using the little sassy massy, there's a boot down here for this load auger. we got bin, beans in one of these little bins. That boot needs cleaned out. It's got rotten beans in it, so that's the job for the sassy massy. But first, I got to get a new sock. And no, I didn't have to use my socks for toilet paper. Got a hole. Yeah, much better. Do you do a donut? I love you too, Bob. There he goes. We ain't got the throttle turned all the way up yet, but he sends it anyways. Oh, that smells absolutely terrible. Oh. Our baby birds left. We had some baby birds here. God. If you guys don't know, rotten beans could be the worst smelling thing in the world. They're pretty high up there. Oh. 
surface stuff right down here. Try and mask the smell a little bit. Spray some Virginia here for beans. Sprayed some yesterday afternoon, morning, afternoon, early afternoon. Uh, hardly any air blowing there right now. I've been waiting. It's what 11 o'clock or so. I've been waiting to get some air moving. So it's just a little bit of air moving now, so I think we'll be okay. So we gotta go up the road here and spray uh, about 60 acres up here in this one field. Get it sprayed and. We'll come back down here and get water and spray right here. Unless the wind picks up too much. We've had rain the last few days and we've had probably close to two inches. Boy, it sure made a difference in corn. And all the yellow strips where we was off, uh, yellow streaks in it where we was off the strips. We planted is uh, now it's turning green, getting whole nitrogen. Starting to even up a little bit. The rain makes a big difference. Okay, we're in the field. Looks like we got ground all right here. You hear that squeaking? Uh, it's pin that's over here. Top pins over here. Uh, I'll show you here, man. These shop top pins right down here will not take grease. We've tried three or four times, and you can see the grease there on the outside. And uh, some service guys here yesterday, and. Uh, they said everybody's having that problem, that was a complaint, so they said, go do something about it. They didn't know what exactly, but do something about it. But it squeaks. Can't go to sleep. Can't take a nap in here. See the wheat over our, our field of wheat. It looked like it was ready early. It kind of looks like it's turned greener again. It's, I don't know, it's in frosted spots. I think it's green backed up, but it's, I thought it'd be ready by the weekend, but it ain't going to be. It's going to be. A, in the week or next week probably first next week deer standing right out in there i don't think you can see it right over there looking at us probably got us a little one here someplace right in that wheat field another deer down there as you can see we have plenty of deer eating some beans i'm right, gonna run up the road here we keep our grain cart in a pole barn just up the road from the farm and we'll see how wet it is around that pole barn. A little bit of, a little bit of bad planning. We should have got that out before it rained, but um, we didn't. So we need to get that cart out in the next day or so. We'll see if it's how, how, how wet it is. Might have to do this tomorrow evening. It's not supposed to rain for three days. So. Looks like someone needs to bush hog over here. Yep, there it is. All right, a few people have asked about this 4320. Yeah, this is a 4320 with a boom mower. We don't use this very much. It's kind of broke down at the moment. We got a guy coming to look at it, make a few adjustments to it, because uh, we have some boom mowing we need to do. But I need to charge the battery on it because it's been sitting here for about a year now. So, ah, the battery's dead. But now we're gonna hop in the 8400 and we're gonna go mow a little bit. Well, go mow where that grain cart is. And then I'm also gonna go mow a couple lanes where we have wheat. Because we're gonna, because we're gonna be doing that wheat or soon. And what would a little tractor time be without a cup of coffee? Disregard the fact that it's 85 degrees. I'm gonna reset my line here, AB line, get a new one, go to straight. New pattern, go to a straight line. That way I can mark a, a straight line through here, it'll do a lot better job. Mark my A. Then we'll go up through here as far as we can. You can see we're just a little bit of lap right here. You can see that right there. Now I'm gonna mark my B. Then I get my auto steer, and that turns green down here, hit there. Then it'll steer itself now. It's marked on that line. And it'll steer pretty straight now. As you can see, when Brian planted this, he was over 
not with the rose, so it threw me off a little bit, so uh, I'm not with the rose either. Okay, I'm not going to make the second pass because it takes me clearer up yonder there and I'd have to come back down, so I'm just going to make one round and I can hold my boom out in the wheat field, shut it off and it won't spray. This machine has an injector on it, two injectors. What that means is the main tank, this big tank here, and that little tank's right there. There's two of them, 25 gallon and 75 gallon. They have their own metering system there, separate of the big tank, and I can put chemical in the big tank, glyphosate and other stuff, but this, the Camba, uh, Ingenia, I don't want to pollute the big tank, it's hard to clean out. So that way I can inject, it injects 12.8 ounces, and it'll inject it pretty darn good close, it's right on the money. And uh, this is what this is here. This top one right here is the main tank now. That's what I'm putting on. And this is the tank, injection tank, 12.8 ounces. The big tank is just water and glyphosate and other chemical, but the injector tank is just one product. So I don't have to contaminate the big tank. It just makes it a lot simpler and easier. And I could also put something in the other injector and say if I want to kill volunteer corn, I'd put a chemical in there and I could spot kill it. If I come to patch, I can turn it on here, hit the button and it turns it on, injects it in the stream through the booms and out. It works real good, I really like it. I had that on my other one and so I wanted two on this one, so that's what we got. Okay, we're empty, got filled with water. Water and chemicals, life sink. Also gonna mow this farmland because that wheat field's gonna get done here in a few days. There's my neighbor's uh, 15 inch wheat, inside our seven and a half. Be interested to see how his wheat does. That is, Something we have considered. It's like Dad's been spraying beans. Yeah, it's clouding up. My phone says it's gonna rain here in about 10 minutes. So I don't know, I'm gonna stop and see what happens here. I don't know. Might miss us. This will be a little shower for this probably. It's getting dark. One little cloud right over us or cell right there around us, I guess. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm just getting home. It looks like everybody here to greet me. I'm a hard working crew. Hans is usually the first one. Hi Hans. There's two little monkeys monk over there. Look these hard look working ones here. Well that's a group there now. Everybody's here for Brian. Can't tell me he's still out working. Alright, that's uh that's it for now. So, I'm going to go home, mow my yard, and tomorrow we get the combines out.